Well, how is it going to go for us today? Yesterday when I was closing off the, uh, the episode and I was saying we'll see you tomorrow, which is right now, it's tomorrow, I had thought I'd probably come back here and I would go through this little tin of parts and whittle off the flashing. And in my case, it's, it's whittling. <laughs> yeah, I, I do the best I can, but uh, I don't want to be always running myself down. Uh, I'm having a good time here. Um, now, there's a couple of things I wanted to say. So I made a little list here of two things. Because <clears throat> after I get through talking about the first thing, if the second thing isn't written down, I'll be thinking, what was it? Uh, anyway... One of the viewers was talking about paint and how he was spraying his photo etch. Or actually, I think it was two viewers mentioned a particular paint and I was thinking, I think I've got that. I'm pretty sure I've got that. Now, there's a couple of tins in the, in the back there. Now, I, I haven't touched those for got to be a year or more. I bought them when I first started the Bismarck. Okay, apparently this is supposed to be better as far as a primer goes. Now, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, like I say, I, I have not touched these for about a year. Um, I don't know if I'm proud of that or not. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to give this a try, and people are going to say, well, well, well Ron, why, why didn't you... Uh, why didn't you use that? Here, here's the fine fine surface primer that people were talking about. It's it's in white, but that's all right. Uh, why didn't you use that? Well, the reason being is because it smells so bad, and I and I do have a face mask. I've got this thing here. And, and this works really well. I remember when I, when I did use these, thinking to myself, well, these things don't smell so bad. And then I took this off and I thought, ooh, they do smell pretty bad. So that's why I'm not using them, because of the odor. And right now all the windows in my house are closed up. And uh, I, I, I know that it's uh, only minus five outside today, so I could have the windows open for a while. <laughs> Uh, minus five is warm here in Winnipeg in the winter time. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. Now, what was the other thing I was going to talk about? Okay, first thing this morning when I turned on my computer, <clears throat> I got a notification that that uh, Scott Ozzy Trekkie had put up a, another video, and he's been modifying or tr or talking about the inaccuracies of his Iowa class. Uh, battle 200 scale battleship that he's working on and uh, he was showing how it just wasn't quite right and he's he's talking about a couple of millimeters more this way and a couple of millimeters more that way and and apparently he had actually been on the real ship so he, he and he had taken photographs and he was showing how how the, from photographs how this wasn't quite right and that wasn't quite right and at least he showed from one photograph. Uh, now, things like that are not important to me. Uh, another a viewer, what, what brought me, got me to thinking about that was one of the viewers was talking about the funnel. When I get to the funnel, and it, I, I do believe that we're going to be getting to the funnel quite quickly in our manual here. Well, maybe not as quickly as I thought. But we do eventually get to the place where we have to put the funnel down, and I'm going to discover that. Yes, the, the funnel the trumpeter provided us with fits on the, on the model, but apparently it's not right. And, uh... Uh... 
I, I don't know how to put this. I don't want to. I, I don't want to come across as I don't care what the model is going to look like because it would be nice if it was just right, but not to the point where I'm going to have to start to try and figure out how to correct the the aft funnel. Uh, it, it's just not that important to me as long as it looks reasonably good in the case, like the like our our Bismarck, our Bismarck over there that you can't see. It's it's in the case and. And I can kind of see it, except I get a bad reflection off the window on the front of the plexiglass. But that, that's okay. I, the the fun was uh, making that ship, not building it. I mean, I mean, uh, not looking at it. And I really, I really enjoyed that. And I'm also, and I'm enjoying the build of the of the hood here. And uh, 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 okay. Enough of that. I think you kind of get the gist of it. Yes, I care that it that it's not right, but I don't care enough that I'm going to go to a lot of work to make any changes. I'm just going to do the best I can with what's in the box, and I think it's going to look okay. Will there be inaccuracies? You bet there will. But that's the way it goes, you know. I I don't think that too many people that have made this kit have actually gone to the effort to change the the aft funnel. You have to be a little bit artistic to be able to do that. And I don't think that most of us are. I've got a feeling that most modelers are kind of like me. They're just enjoying enjoying the build and hoping that it's going to turn out okay. Um, now, how is this COVID thing affecting me? <clears throat> okay. Uh, every once in a while, a viewer will met, will talk about the COVID situation. Well, here here in Winnipeg, we're in presently in lockdown. Um, well, what does that mean here for us here in Winnipeg? Well, it means that except for immediate family, you can only have one person on a regular basis come to your house to visit you. Just just one, and uh, and I do. I own. There's only one. One of my neighbors comes over almost every day. Uh, be, because because he asked, he wanted to be, he wanted to know if if he could be my one visitor, and I said sure. Up until that time, really nobody came over, and uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a loner. Uh, some of you may have picked up on that over the years. I'm the only one in the house. I'm enjoying the model build. Uh, I enjoy making the videos and uploading them. Uh, but I'm a loner. And I, I sometimes wonder why, why is it that I'm a loner? And uh, I, th I think it's because uh, when I was a little kid, I was, I was raised, you might say, weird. I wasn't raised normal. I lived on my grandparents' farm for the first, uh, from the ages of uh, two through five, almost six. I was raised by my grandparents. And the reason for that is not because my parents, uh, uh, abandoned me. Well, I guess in a sense they did, but they were they were misguided by superstition, and they thought they had to do what they did because they wanted to be missionaries, and uh, they they were just misguided. They they didn't know. They thought they were doing the right thing, but they I, the way I look at it now, I I don't think they were. I mean, it was for superstition, for goodness sakes. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so I think that's probably why I'm a loner. Uh, yeah. How did we get onto that? Okay, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to turn the camera off here, and I'm going to try and reshape some of our little parts here and get this to get the flashing off. Uh, maybe I need a cup of coffee here. Well, coffee's cold now. Probably about an hour has passed here. And I've spent the last, I guess, hour just going through the last almost 10 minutes of my rant here. I, I can't believe that I was rambling for almost 10 minutes there. And, uh,. I realized when I was listening to myself, well, first of all, I was trying to decide, 
do I actually want to uh, publish this, you know? But it's my choice. I can or I can't. I mean, if I don't do it, you won't know anything one way or the other. However, I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll put it up. But I want to clarify something first. And that is that, that I sort of gave the impression that my, my parents were, were not, you know, uh, loving. They, they were loving in, in, the, in the same way. I want to make sure I get this right here. I don't want to be, maybe I should be uh, putting the macro lens on for this so you can see why, why I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this one later. Um, anyway, so, so my parents were misguided in the same way that the parents of the children that went to Jonestown and gave their kids the poison were misguided. We were just sipping at a different kind of poison. Uh, it didn't mean that those parents in Jonestown didn't love their kids. They had been misguided by a religion. And uh, it is my opinion that all organized religion worldwide should be banned. And that, that sounds pretty, pretty serious. But when you think about it, why should we be, why should we be allowed to teach and, and uh, perpetuate superstition? Um, you know, uh, uh, well, superstitions. Do you think Google? If you don't know what a superstition is, Google it. Superstition would be like the common ones. A black cat crosses your path. You know, the other day, well, actually, it was about a year ago. Now, I went into the, one of the model stores, and they've got they've got cats and birds and stuff like that. And of course, with this COVID thing, I haven't been there for almost a year now. And anyway, I go in, and and uh, there was a black cat across my path, across the aisle. And I jokingly said to somebody there, uh-oh, a black cat or something. And the lady that actually owned the store or managed the store, she says, that means good luck in this store. Well, yeah, a black cat crosses your path, you have bad luck. Or if you step on a spider, it's going to rain. Or, in my case, if you don't believe just right, you're going to burn in a lake of fire forever and ever. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I was taught when I was a kid. It's superstition. It's superstition. Now, uh, let me uh, move in a little closer here. And uh, I'll show you how I'm going to try and cut this part without damaging the splinter rail. It may or may not work. I'll show you regardless of how it comes out. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just bring you in a little bit here. Okay, now if I can keep this little part over top of this little black mark on my tabletop, I'll know it's more or less in the center of everything. But you'll notice here how the splinter guard, or maybe what I should say is where the, the, uh, the, the, the part of the mold where the, where the uh, molten plastic came into the mold for some reason and I, I I don't know why Trumpeter does it this way they did this on the Bismarck as well in places they've got it right up here along this top edge here why couldn't they have had it somewhere else come, you know come out come out here and then cut it off or or any anywhere else except right here because it is it is really difficult to to take this off without damaging the, the, the top of the rail. For instance, if, if I cut it like this, what's going to happen is that I know from experience the hard way, it's going to have a tendency to, to pull itself out of, the, of this top railing here. And you're going to end up with a little divot in there. And then in order to get rid of the divot, then you have to, you know, just file everything down evenly. Now, first of all, let's see if I can just shorten it just a little bit here, very carefully. Okay. 
Now, now even if I try to do my trick of, of slowly twisting as I'm biting into it, this, it will it will help. I'll just see if I can get it here. Okay, I think I've got it. Oh, where's my file gone? Okay, just very, very gently just try and take this off here now. Can you still see it okay? Should, I should clarify, I'm not artistic at this sort of thing. The only thing that me and Bob Ross have in common is our voice. Otherwise, the artistic stuff just isn't here. Okay, now, I think that I'll just use the fine here and just try and take the... Did I get it? No, it's still a little bit... You can see it underneath here. There's a little bit of a... Now, nobody's going to see that anyway, so why am I worrying about it? I should check the monitor. Can you still see it? Oh, yeah. Okay, this is half worn out, I think. I should really make myself up a new one from Thousand Grit Sandpaper. I've actually got some. That works pretty good, too. Thousand Grit will work, do pretty good on something like this. Actually, I think it works better than this. I have sandpaper down in my workshop that goes up to 12,000 grit. I used it when I was turning pens. It actually provided a really nice... Uh, finish on, on an acrylic pen or, or even on a uh, on a wood pen that you anyway that's another another story okay I'm gonna just go ahead and try and do this one here the same way and then we'll look at it afterwards I got this one now okay this this one actually went really well I can't guarantee that the other four connections are going to be you know, the uh, come out this good. Uh, what I'm wondering about is why could they not have, so when I was speaking of turning pens, when I was turning pens, I used a, a vacuum chamber and uh, I would get the, the, the molten, not molten, but uh, uncured acrylic, the two part acrylic, to uh, go get into little places where there was a void. And if you have your small little voids, like the pores on wood, for instance, under vacuum, when you when the room temp room pressure comes back on, atmospheric pressure comes back on, the uh, liquid plastic will go into all those little micro voids. And I don't know why they couldn't use that same sort of system when they do these sort of things. No, no, maybe they sort of do. But uh, anyway, let's uh, see what we can do here. Now, I don't think I need to put the macro lens on to show you this, and if I do, it's not going to look as good. But anyway, there was one right there. There was another one right here. Maybe I could have used the fine disc a little bit on that one, just a little bit more. On the back, there was, there was one here, and there was one here. Now, you can see a little bit of discoloration. Uh, but it's fairly smooth. I don't really feel it with my finger anyway. However, what I noticed when I started to file off this one here, there is a little piece right here. You can sort of see that there's probably a, maybe like a little, a little uh, flagpole or something like that is probably supposed to come up and attach right there. I do know that that ladder that we nipped off uh, yesterday has to go right here somehow. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you this right here, that a person has to be very careful not to accidentally file that little part off. Um, anyway, it came up pretty good. I think it'll be okay once it's uh, sprayed with the uh, with the flat uh, number 22. At least that's, that's the plan. The, the outside will be the 22, 
because that's what most of the uh, the other superstructure sides are, or bulkheads. Uh, this will probably be a dark a dark gray again. I don't know what's going to go on here. I do notice that. Don't know if you can see it, but there there is little detailed rivets. Uh, maybe I should have the macro lens on to show that. Um, I got nothing else to do right now. Let's slip on the macro lens here and look at that. You can see the little tiny rivets that they've uh, detailed all the way around this bottom flange. Now I know I often complain about trumpeters should have done this and they should have done that. But on the other hand, they do do a lot of really good stuff. I mean, we're just right in there on the macro level. In all likelihood, nobody's ever going to see those. And I'm going to have to be careful when I, when I paint because I probably will be painting with a brush this this uh, bottom deck here and uh, yeah I'll, it'll be very easy to get it on too heavy and just completely bury those little rivets so nobody would see them for sure anyway it's of interest to me I'm starting to go through all these little parts now and get the extra flashing off of them and if I don't show you things as I come to them I'm liable to end up forgetting so I'm just going to move in a little bit. Well, first of all, we'll look on the top of these little boxes here. Now, on the back side of these boxes is where the sprue was attached, right there where the file is touching. Now, they're gone now, of course, and it's all sanded away. But when I was sanding, I didn't notice, and I almost went to do the tops of these boxes. And then I realized that they've got, like, latches and hinges, these you know, are mounted on the, on here, or molded in, in here. I guess the idea was when the gun or whatever was mounted right here, the, uh, or right here, the uh, people probably kept their ammo in these boxes, and they just flipped the lid open. And uh, just for the fun of it, let's get our little Popeye the Sailor and see how big that was. Okay. Well, clearly those boxes weren't very high, maybe three, two and a half feet high. They're not, they weren't very big, because uh, Popeye here has been scaled to six feet. Okay, yeah. Now the reason I'm showing you these two pieces is because I just wanted you to see how there was more rivets molded around the, the outside here. And obviously this one I've taken the sprue off, and this one has got to be done yet. And it, you have to be nice and careful. Um, and uh, just once again for perspective here. And this one here I haven't done yet. There are four places that you have to nip off sprue, as well as maybe try and very carefully get rid of some flashing. And uh, this comes off, this comes off. And this comes off. However, when you get around over here, let me get this just right, you notice this does not come off, but this does. So, uh, yeah. And once again, for a perspective. Now, I do believe that. Our modeling friend Steve said that this is a Vickers quad gun. I think he said quad gun. I'd have to look it up to be sure. However, this one's had all the flashing removed in the right places. And this one, of course, is yet to be done. In other words, when you're nipping off, you want to be careful to nip right on the edge, on the, you know, right there by this, whatever it is. And, uh, and on, on this one here, as I mentioned before, you take this piece off, but you leave this piece on. And, uh, and when you're doing this one right here, you want to try and not get this little rounded part flat-sided on the back. Um, yeah. Now, the hardest one that I found, so I can get this turned around here, you know how I like to poke at stuff. Okay. The hardest one was this one right here. Because it was hard to get the cutter in just at the right angle. And, and not accidentally nip off this part up here. You wanted to be sort of, get it flat. 
um, which, which you can see here that I did. At least I think I did. Okay, I'll bet you some of you noticed the mistake that I had made when I was showing you the comparison between this piece and this piece and how I yet had to nip off the sprue of this piece. Well, it used to look like this one over here. And when I was nipping the little piece of sprue off, like this one right here, off of this part right here, I thought, I don't remember having to be careful for that one. And in fact, I think that's the one that I said was difficult to get the get the nippers in. Yeah, it was actually. Okay. Yeah, I, I nipped it out by mistake here. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> May as well laugh. No use crying. What we have here is the pieces of sprue that have been nipped off all those other parts. All except one. Can you spot which one is not actually a piece of uh, sprue that we're going to throw out? Well, it's this one right here. This is actually one of those magazines. The piece of sprue that's attached to it is about as big as the part that we want to save. Now this little protrusion coming out of the front here that I'm just touching now, well, that has to stay on. I think that's maybe what plugs into the side of the uh, of the gun itself. And this sprue part keeps off and that it comes off. And as I mentioned before, we want to try and keep this round. But, you know, it's so very small. Okay. They are all trimmed now. All 16 of them. We do not have any time left like to get the photo etch on these little parts and get them stuck together, let alone do any painting. Um, I'm going to tell you a quick interesting story here. Remember I had these 16 parts laid out and just above them there was a little pile of uh, sprue that I had nipped off? Well, I went to throw out the sprue. A few minutes later I'm noticing I've only got 15 of these left. Yep, I threw out one of these in the garbage can. Now, I thought, no use looking, I'll never find it. And I thought, well, why not? So I started perusing through the garbage can and I'm pulling stuff out and I pulled out a piece of masking tape. And stuck on the masking tape, I see a little, little piece of plastic, and I thought, well, that won't, I can't be that lucky. I was that lucky. I've got my 16 pieces back now. Thanks for watching. All being well, we'll see you tomorrow.